With James Gunn in charge of the DCU, no one's quite sure what's going on with Matt Reeves' The Batman and any potential sequels thereof. But James Gunn has said he's going to be leaving the universe pretty much untouched, so I am going to be making a sequel. Let's go. Every movie needs a trailer. Let's start with ours. Black screen. Voice over from Batman. Everyone has something that drives them to this life. Set to a circus. Now presenting the Flying Graysons! For some, it's merely a drive to make the world better. John and Mary Grayson leap onto their trapeze. For others, it's as petty as loving the thrill. They fall. Kid, tell me, what is it for you? Young Dick Grayson sobbing over the corpses of his parents. Then we cut to actually seeing Dick Grayson, and he says, I want revenge on the man who murdered my parents. Smash it. Now we have 10 to 15 seconds of Batman and Robin fighting side by side. Then, vengeance. That's a start. Title card, Batman, The Mask. The trailer ends with some bandages falling from the top of the screen. Trailers are most certainly important, but a good trailer does not a good movie make. We need some meat to put on the bones of this thing. The film starts with that same circus scene from the trailer. It's obviously not intercut, and it would probably play out smoother than the jumpy, weird cuts that I was using, but it would play roughly the same. There is one change, though. Bruce Wayne is set up as clearly a member of the audience. That way, we get to see Bruce's reaction. He doesn't get up and become Batman immediately. He walks away because he's having a trauma-based panic attack, which Yes, yeah, seriously, of course he would in this context. The scene ends with a slow fade to black on Dick Grayson looking at the corpse of his parents and crying. Now we're moving well away from any pre-existing comic storyline. Young Master Grayson spends a while just stewing in his rage. Scenes of that are intercut with scenes of Dick trying to get into fights, but getting his ass handed to him because he's like 10. At the same time, we have clips of Batman in his lair, figuring out clues and deducing the big threat for this movie. His childhood best friend, Thomas Elliot, aka Hush. Do I need to explain Hush? Yeah, I probably should. I only found out about him like a month ago, and I'm the one making this video. Thomas Tommy Elliot was Bruce Wayne's childhood best friend. Admittedly, it is Bruce, so that ain't saying much, but still. Bruce and Tommy would play Stratego together, and Tommy would always be five steps ahead, chastising Bruce for always attacking before finding the opponent's weakness. Elliot, despising his parents and wanting to take their wealth for his own, organized a situation where he would murder them in a car crash and frame it as an accident. That way, he could earn the fortune of his abusive father and neglectful mother. When Thomas Wayne successfully saved his mother, he began to blame Bruce for that. He didn't hate the Waynes for failing to save his father. He hated them for succeeding in saving his mother. Years down the line, he witnessed his mother die of cancer, finally giving him the wealth he always craved. But during those many years, he began to fester resentment for Bruce specifically after seeing him wind up by accident in the situation Tommy wanted to wind up in on purpose. Tommy covered his face in bandages and named himself Hush after the nursery rhyme, Hush Little Baby, a song about a boy who's never satisfied. Fitting. He went on to become one of Batman's greatest foes, always being 10 steps ahead of the opponent. Anyway, back on track, finally. The scene I described ends with Bruce running across the rooftops and Dick seeing him. The young circus performer uses his acrobatic skills to climb up there and stop Bruce in his tracks before he gets to wherever he was going. He basically begs Bruce to let him join, and that leads to the scene you saw in the trailer that ends with vengeance. That's a start. Bruce thinks it over and basically decides, if I don't let this kid join me, he's gonna go off and get himself killed. So he does let the kid join him. 
We cut to a training montage of Dick becoming Robin, and it ends with him being presented with the costume. Okay, now I really have next to nothing figured out for between this part and the climax, but I got a bit, so let's, let's say that. First of all, Hush killed the Graysons, obviously. He did it because he knew it would mess with Bruce. What he didn't count on was Bruce adopting the kid. The other part is a full-on subplot. Police Commissioner James Gordon is the only member of the JCPD who has any respect for Batman. And now the Cape Crusader's bringing a ten-year-old into the fight. That's throwing a wrench in all the trust that Gordon had in him. Alright, climax. Let's go. Batman and Robin are storming Hush's lair. For plot reasons, they need to split up. Dick asks, What do I do when I find him? Bruce just says, I'll leave that up to you. Bruce knows that if the kid really wants vengeance, there's nothing he can do to stop him. Dick knows that if he kills Hush, he loses the right to be Robin. They split up, and there's an intercut scene of Dick and Bruce fighting simultaneously, but on opposite sides of the building. Then it happens. Dick finds Thomas Elliot, the psychopath who murdered his parents to mess with Bruce. He looks down and sees a gun on the table next to him. He looks back at Hush, who's almost mocking his intensity. He looks back at the gun. He hesitates. Then... Dick throws a battering across the room. There's a big, long, slow-mo sequence zoom in of the Batarang, showing that Dick is truly embracing the Bat family. He gets into a fight with Hush, during which Batman enters. Bruce sees the gun on the table, sees the fight, and gives a knowing nod before joining the fray. He knows this kid is on the right track. They knock out Hush, unmask him, and put him in Arkham. The dynamic duo rests easy that night, knowing they're inspiring hope, not just fear, in the people of Gotham. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this. I'm not going to waste your time with a super long outro or anything. Uh, on screen, you have the two other videos that came out today. A video asking if Batman needs a Robin, and another video going over my pitch for what I would do if I was given free reign over the DCU. So, until next time, bye bye